They smell blood in the water. They are smiling. Well, of course they're smiling. Why, I can smile and murder while I smile. <laughs> Jackals. It's just like 1937 all over again. When Hitler took Austria? No, when they labeled me box office poison. I couldn't get arrested in this goddamn town. But I was a young woman then. I still had time to claw my way back to the top, but not now. Baby Jane was my last chance. Maybe not. I read a beautiful script today with a wonderful role for you. Pauline dropped it off at the house. Who is Pauline? You've met her over 50 times. She works for Mr. Aldridge. Bob has a new script. Well, why didn't you tell me? Not Mr. Aldridge, Miss Pauline. She wrote this script. But Bob will direct it. No, she would also direct the picture when you would star. Oh, Christ. A woman director. <laughs> well, it really is over. Look at Mama Sita on that poster. <laughs> she she is. is such a badass. <laughs> She's a crowd ass. <laughs> um, Jackie Hoffman, welcome to Build. Thank you. I was so thrilled to talk to you about this character who, dare I say, is already a little bit iconic. I'm hearing about people already planning their Halloween costumes. Yeah. Everybody I, wants to be Mama Sita for Halloween. Yeah, it's Drag Sita season. <laughs> have you seen drag queens dressed as Mama Sita? I yet? have not, but I have worked on gay cruises, and I have a spy out on a ship who told me that already on the ships there's Sita. Sita at sea. Oh my gosh. Uh, we need to start a hashtag Drag Sita. Dragacita, yeah. Yep. Emmy Sita, Dragacita, <laughs> Mima Sita. I've done them all. Matza Sita for Passover. She is, like I said, such a badass. And I think kind of a, a feminist. I mean, uh, the character arc is so fantastic. I think especially because you show up four minutes into the first episode of Feud, and you basically just open the door. The first few times we see you, you're opening a door. And I've never seen somebody open a door with such character. You oh, just steal those scenes. Now you're just kidding around and kissing my ass, no. right? I, I never say... He opens a door with character. You do. And I'm not the only one who said that. <laughs> Ryan Murphy has been talking all over town about how you steal all of your scenes despite not, uh, not opening having doors. Line. Right. Oh, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, people might not know. And handing at... Pepsi bottles. That was the first day I handed Jessica a Pepsi bottle for four hours. Really? Yeah. Wow. Did you do different, like, versions? I tried, of... but Ryan got wind of that right away, and he's smaller. I'm like, oh, here we go. This is television. <laughs> I see what this is going to be. Because you were doing your big theatrical... Here's the Pepsi! Da-da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> Uh, well, that's a great opportunity to talk about the fact that you have this this lengthy and legendary stage career as well. Um, the Broadway credits, the off-Broadway credits, you're an Obie winner. You uh, were on tour with Second City for a long time with some famous names. Um, and now, you know, and certainly you've had some screen uh, credits as well. Like, I, I remember seeing you in Garden State. Yes, um, the young people all know the Garden State. Introduced me to a whole generation. Yeah, um, and but I feel like people are calling this a breakout role, even though you've been working so hard for so long. I've been breaking for a long time. <laughs> well, do you consider, do you feel broken? More broken? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I feel more broken. I mean, it was my first, after all these years, it was the first time I was actually a series regular, because mm -hmm. there, there have been a lot of television things, memorable television appearances. Yes. But it's always been, you know, one episode or one or two episodes, and they always, oh, you're so good. We're going to have your back. We're going to have your back. And they never have me back. So this, this was one. like a regular, every episode thing was like a huge deal. That was like a big turning point. It's, it's interesting to sort of follow your career and to hear that um, and then think about the storyline of the show when there was the, these actresses fighting for the credit they deserved and fighting for the roles and being sidelined. And I'm wondering whether you felt any parallels in watching the show to your own career and the fight of being an actress trying to get work. Of course, I mean, it's always a fight, even after you book something, it's that's why you write big checks to managers and agents, it's like, no, she deserves to be here and put her name in these credits and get her name here and, and there's that, there's, there's just, there's also being, you know, a, a woman of a certain age, I feel that huge time, I mean, 
I was auditioning for comedy sketch shows in my early 30s, and they told me I was too old. Wow. I've been, uh, you know, I'm like a, a gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in terms of breaking out, or God forbid anybody should want to have sex with my character. God forbid I'd be in a marriage. You know, it, it's, it's, very, it's very limiting. And some of the people in the industry who you think would be or, or supposed to have imagination seems to be seem to be the ones that limit you the most, which was why it was so great to do to do this role. She's uh, I just every time I look at her, I can't decide whether I want to take her home with me or like run screaming. She's got this sort of well, the way she cleans, you want to take her. Yeah, home I with guess you. so. Um, is that based You'll have on a any clean house and any reality? Like, did you bring your own house cleaning skills into the? You no, <laughs> you don't want my house cleaning skill. <laughs> Joan Crawford would have a, a, a pretty dirty house. I heard that you had never met Jessica Lange before this, but you sent her an email and said, I'm Jackie, I'm playing your maid. Yes, I look forward to having you throw shit at me. And she did throw some she stuff. She threw some shit at me, yeah. Uh, you, your chemistry with her is fantastic. I never would have guessed Good. that you hadn't met before. Cool. Uh, I also love the quote you, you gave to, uh, I can't remember which publication it was, but you said, you're not just the maid, you're also her, her husband and her wife and her <laughs> right. mother and her... Uh, like her agent and conciliary, um, yeah, yeah. the The scene we just saw is that sort of agent moment where right. you bring her a script. Can you talk about film, filming that scene and how that shows a different side of Mamacita? Oh, well, that was great filming that scene because I had some dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it was it was it, it, it just a great opportunity. It's like something that's so you know in my soul. Here's a great role for a woman. Here's a great role for an aging woman. Here's a script that was written by another woman, a woman who wants to direct. I mean, that I introduced you know to Ryan's credit, I got to introduce this whole thing that Ryan Murphy's very passionate about. Is you know he he was saying backstage at one point backstage. Listen to me, <laughs> off camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm theater folk. To like, you know, to Susan and Jessica, and they were all, you know, conferring, what do we do about these white men? Got to get rid of these white men, you know, that whole culture. So here was this great storyline about, uh, 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 beautifully played by Alison Wright, a, a female writer who was just a gal Friday, who, who was talented and wanted to be a writer and director. So it was an honor to bring that whole plot and be the, the keeper of that flame. Yeah. Um, she is really a feminist in that way, um, but she also puts up with, uh, pardon my language, with a lot of bullshit from, uh, from Joan. Yeah, she how does. Do, can we talk a little bit about that dichotomy and, and how she manages to be such a, uh, like to push for rights, but also sort of keep herself in a position where she's being abused? Right. Well, I justified it by saying that here's, here's a role in, it's someone's life that's so difficult, you know, to be able to work for Joan Crawford that, you know, this was another challenge that not many people could meet. She took pride, I think, in, in being able to meet that challenge. Mm -hmm. And she saw sides of Joan that people didn't see, like there was a lot worthwhile there. And we wanted to, the, the story wanted to get away, Ryan wanted to get away from that stereotype, why a hanger type of thing <laughs> and make her more human. And I think Jessica Lange did that in the most brilliant, multi-layered way. Like there was, so, there was so much to her. You know, it was probably an existence of like, oh, she's cool, she's cool, she's cool. Shit, here comes a vase, you know, <laughs> kind of <laughs> situation. Yeah, the, there was a scene where you, you talk about having had an interaction with the gardener who hasn't gotten right. paid in a while, and you say, I told him it was an honor to work for, to, to trim, uh, to trim Joan's Miss head. Crawford's bush <laughs> was the line. Can you give me the... Look how hesitant the... you are to say bush. The well, hedge, bush, bush. the hedge. <laughs> Every gay man in America comes up to me. That line about trimming Miss Crawford's bush. Well, that'll be perfect for, for Dragacita. Yes, that was a good Mimacita, Dragacita, right. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the glasses. You've got glasses that are similar to, similar to her glasses. Did the real Mamacita wear glasses? Do you she know? did wear glasses. She and when I saw, there's very few pictures of her, and a few of those are in that fabulous Joan Crawford book, My Way of Life. Yeah. And when I saw I was going to play her, one of my first reactions was, oh, thank God I'll get to wear glasses. <laughs> because I know a film day is from like 5 a.m. to midnight. Mm -hmm. And I, if it was a contact, it would be like, yeah. 
you know, I know. just a cornflake on my eye. Uh, yikes. Jessica has talked about... And they about let me keep the glasses, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, amazing. I feel like they kind of belong in the Smithsonian or something, I mean. Well, now they're in my bedroom. Oh, nice. Um, it, Jessica's talked about doing just a ton of research and, and the sort of double-edged sword of there being so much out there on Joan Crawford. How much research did you do none. into the... Re really? None? That, well, that's Jessica. Of course, Jessica does a ton of research. Me? I'm like, oh, German? Okay, go. Um, no more than that. I, I, like, I've said in every other interview I've done that they, they, I bought my way of life when I was in my 20s and mm -hmm. establishing myself as, as fag hag extraordinaire. <laughs> And uh, it, 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 just was, it just went from there. I knew about Mama Sita, and that's pretty much what I knew about Mama Sita was limited to that book. Huh. But that, and with Ryan's guidance, that's all I needed to know. Did you study the German dialect, or is that in there from your improv days? You just can, like, make up or, you know, access any accent you need. Yeah, I've got, like, dialogue Rolodex in my head. Uh -huh. You know, I, actually, I'm just, I, I'm not that... Uh, I'm just a lazy actor, so I just have everything. That's the easiest way. Just know it. Uh, I, you might call that lazy. I would call that insanely talented. Well, it, I grew up watching a lot of TV as a child. Uh -huh, and you just <laughs> That's basically it. Just I'm a, I'm, I was always a natural mimic from when I was a child, mm -hmm. which got me kicked out of class a lot, but you know, help with the gigs later on. How much did your improv training with Second City... Uh, contribute to this role because there there are uh, another quote from Ryan he said that he was excited to just see where you took each scene right I think that the second city training is invaluable for just for 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 any role um to really kind of explore the meat of a character by improvising and see where they'd go and and try to see what else you could bring to it and were any of the lines improvised that we see in the final product? There was, yeah. There, um, there was a scene where, uh, I don't remember which episode, where Joan is uh, back to the studio. I think it's the first day she's filming Baby Jane and she's got gifts for everybody. And I said to Ryan, what if it's like in The Devil Wears Prada where she's like that, you know, that's uh, Betty Buckley, you want to know, she was in Sunset Boulevard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it, he said, that's a great idea. And so then it was, I became, Billy, what? Billy, Billy, so nice to see you. <laughs> Heather, her <laughs> husband died. Heather, I'm so sorry to hear about your husband. You know, so it, it became that. So some, a lot of things grew out of improvisation. And Ryan was with everybody, with Susan. Susan was a great improviser. Really? Yeah, I mean, they were all such great actors, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, I'm glad that you said that that way, because I think that sometimes people see improvisers as non-actors, as, like, there's a difference. Right. And they are certainly, like, different skill sets, the ability to be quick on your feet and have the, and inventing the lines as opposed to interpreting them. Right. But you do both so brilliantly. Both are important. Yeah. And, and there are a lot of people who now are, you know, I'm going to take classes at Upright Citizens Brigade, and I'm going to be Amy Poehler. And I know like this whole young generation, but it's so important it, to, to have acting classes also. It's so important because when someone's just doing, they're both invaluable, but I find that when someone's just doing that improv training, you can really tell because there were people at Second City like that. You're like, oh man, they're not actors. They're, uh, they're, they're kind of, they're improvisers, but you could tell when that extra dimension is there. Yeah, some of the best improvisers I know are also the best Shakespearean actors that I know. I'm wondering whether you have any, uh, s like, non-comedic roles that you would die to play. Oh, any. <laughs> <laughs> Name one. Oh, Martha and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you would be great in that. So can we just put that out into the universe? Yeah, that'll like, help. Put it into the universe. Well, I mean, there are a lot of people yeah, it's watching. it's been put into the universe for years. All right, then no, I'll no take one's my bite. input out None of the of universe. None of the stars and the planets are biting. <laughs> Look, I say the more we do it, the more we get the word God out. God bless you. You're a good person. <laughs> I'm not mocking your goodness. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're a very good person. Uh, can we talk about your theatrical your theatrical career? Good, a little whatever. Bit? I'm stuck here. Talk about whatever <laughs> you want. I want to talk about how brilliant you are on stage because okay. I have seen. She's making fun of me. No, God forbid. <laughs> 
<laughs> I only make fun of her on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, okay, actually, before we talk about it, theater. It, yeah. Uh, why Bless she, you've invo in, admired everybody else's career but mine, I've noticed on Twitter. And I was like, what? Where am I? You're I there. Am. Okay, Look, yeah. I, I, four different times, I spent money, extra money, to sit in the onstage seating at Xanadu oh. so I could We be didn't have Twitter then. Uh, I think I did, 2009. Wow, I still had a flip phone. I'm gonna go back through my Twitter archives and find the raves about you and retweet all of them. Okay. Uh, I went just ba went back to see you in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory this week, which you're starring as um, mm -hmm. Mrs. TV, Ethel TV, Mike TV's mom. Uh huh. Um, and you, what did they say? You're dressed like you're in the 1950s. F 1958. He um, says, and yeah. yeah, and then you have at one point my favorite moment is you've got a bag search and there's a, like a mace on a chain in there. Right. What is Ethel TV up to? <laughs> well, that was Christian Borle's idea, like so many other things. He said, "What if we search bags and every bag has something extremely dangerous in it?" But then I'm <laughs> I'm afraid of the bag with the rubber duck. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, um, it's just we try to just make everything as wackadoodle as we can in that show. We just make ourselves laugh and just be silly. She's also got a little bit of a substance thing going on. She does. She does. Well, it was written for me. <laughs> I was going to ask you if, and if there was any, I mean, I guess all theatrical uh, pursuits involve some kind of improv because you're trying different things. Um, was Mrs. TV, I, she, I felt like she could have been an improv character that, someone was throwing out ideas to you and you were building on, like like in an improv scene. Yeah, I mean, they kind of, they, they gave me the foundation. I knew where she was from. I knew what she was. And it's just like everything else. I look at the script and I look at the score and I see what it is and I'm, ah, this is what it is, mm -hmm. you know. One of my favorite roles ever for you was um, in The Addams Family. Really? Um, yeah, because that was, again, I tend to go back and see shows over and over again. And you had a couple of lines you got to do differently every night. Yeah. Um, and I, that was something I looked forward to and a reason to be a repeat attender. Some, apparently, everybody looks forward to that. And when I came to the theater with the first day of rehearsal for Charlie and the Chalket Factory, the doorman said, you going to add lib? Uh-huh. And? <laughs> He said, I think I'm on a tighter leash. Dude. In fact, I tried a couple of things yesterday, and I got a nasty text from our stage manager. What did so. you try? And oh, was shut down? we had such a... It's not going to replay here. We had so, uh, an audience of... Because it was a Wednesday matinee, so it was all fucking children. <laughs> so they... But they were very excited, and they would clap. It's not really clappy music, so they clapped to every goddamn <laughs> song. They were clapping to ballads. They were clapping to underscoring. I mean, they just didn't know what the fuck. So then I have this great line at the top of my second number. I have this great line where I'm talking about the Oompa Loompas, and I say, uh-oh, the little people are singing again. That's never a good sign, right? So then instead I said, uh-oh, the little people are clapping oh, again. No. That's never a good sign. The, I, well, well, the Oompa Loompas fell over, so that was worth yeah. it. Stage manager was not too happy. So this obviously is a show that's going to attract a lot of kids. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, well, you've talked publicly a lot about not being a fan but, of kids. Yeah. What made you... How do I live? Yeah. How do well, I get I'm, from day to day? Why do you say yes to a, ki a kid's show or a show that is so... Up <laughs> You got the golden ticket, is what you're telling me? I but, tried to get into that God of Dance, which is all seniors, but I, they didn't see me for that. I haven't heard a lot about that show recently. Is it still coming to Broadway? I believe so, oh, around good. the corner. It sounds well, delightful. Maybe it'll be your next project. Maybe. <laughs> Can I ask you about why you have a 16 on your Twitter handle, Jackie Hoffman 16? Why don't you ask my manager? He's here. It was his idea. Do you think were there other were there 15 other Jackie Hoffmans already? I guess so. Oh, oh, I see. Like Product 19, the cereal. Yeah. Um. I. Whoa. Do they not make that anymore? There was a cereal called Product 19. Um. Formula 409. Anybody? <laughs> Love potion number nine. <laughs> Love potion number nine. Number eight only made him like me. <laughs> What's the question? I don't know. It's, it's so fucking stupid, all of it. It was my manager's idea. You're going to get on Twitter. You're going to get on Twitter. I didn't even want to. It's just still very painful. 
It's like, what if she has this many followers I don't have, I barely have, I work so hard, my tweets are funny, I only have, I'm caught now on this whole second grade social media rejection no. depression thing. And I have a stupid name, Jackie no, Hoffman you don't. 16. At Jackie Hoffman 16. Uh, <laughs> I wanted like Juki, you know, anything. What about Oi God Help Me? He was, no, no. I mean, it's not too late. No mazel, can I change it? No, no. <laughs> well, everybody follow Jackie because she's amazing on Twitter and off. Uh, and on stage and on screen. I think I'm gonna have to go back and watch Feud again uh, just for your scenes. Look at her. Look at Mama Sita. Um, here's a question for you. Ryan Murphy has, is wonderful to bring back actors in his series, you know, from American Horror Story. Um, they've already announced what the next feud is going to be, Diana and Charles. Has there been any talk about finding you a role in that series? I don't know. I asked my agent in L.A., and she said, that's not happening. Oh. Yeah. Why? So, uh, I guess that I'm supposed to give the answer. We can hope. You never know. We can, Ryan, Ryan's like the type of... Ryan is like like insane genius. Yeah. So, I mean, and I've observed his behavior. I've had five months to do it. So, you know what would be funny? If someone could bring in the coffee, call Jackie Hoffman, like at the last minute, he could just do something incredibly wacky. So I have faith that right. his insane genius will, will, will kick I would and will be back. say I'll he put did good energy before. into the universe. He did use me before in a series I did with Andrew Reynolds. That's right. right. Um, the, the, the New Normal. I loved that show. Yeah. Um, but he didn't know you were auditioning for this one, right? Like, he didn't call it, say, like, let's get Jackie Hoffman in there. I don't know the real story. You seem to know more than I do. I've been doing a lot of research. What did he say? He said that he said that you that he didn't know you were auditioning for to play Mama Sita. Oh, but great! Then, but then the audition like blew everyone away so much that you were a shoo-in. Ah. that nobody else held a candle to you. Yeah. Basically, it wasn't a nepotism call. It was like you really earned it. So. Okay, so that's, that's good. good. Yeah. You know who was who I heard was really good was Jackie Hoffman, fifteen. Really <laughs> gave for great. Um. How do you feel about taking a couple of questions from the audience? Uh, all right, they seem like a nice bunch. <laughs> They're not children, so that already is a step ahead. Who has See, a here's what's sad. No one's going to have a question from me. I, I think you're probably oh, wrong. Oh, look, someone has a question. Oh, look, right there. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Uh, I just want to say I'm a big fan of Mama C. Ten Feud, uh, and I had the pleasure of seeing you on Broadway and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well. Loved it. Uh, my question was, uh, the show itself was very funny and energetic with all the kids and the different characters. Um, so I feel like there must be like a party backstage every single night after every show. Um, what's it like working with the kids? I know you said you don't like the kid, like working with kids. Well, but all the, uh, most of the children are played by adults in our cast. Those are all adults. Did you really think they were children? Yeah, I thought they were children. <laughs> Where were you sitting? <laughs> In the balcony. In the balcony. Oi, sorry. Well, Charlie's really a kid. Charlie, the, the boy Charlie is the only biological child. <laughs> there are three of them in rotations, but I will tell my cast members how convincing they are <laughs> as playing children. Because they are. I mean, he's not, that's not the first person that's thought that. They're slight. They're all short. They're all... Br that's how good they are. They're, like, brilliant. You think it's a real little kid. Yeah. And... In, on the set of Feud, I was telling Jessica about it before we went into rehearsal, and she said, how's that going to play, adults as children? I said, I think, I think they're nailing it. I think it's, it's going to play well. So obviously it does play well. But in parties backstage, yeah, the ensemble drinks together. They don't invite me. I do shots alone in my room. And I have weed gummies in my fridge. For before or after the show? Oh, there's a certain point during the show I can drop so that it hits at exactly the right time. <laughs> so the curtain call, you're feeling a little fuzzy? It's, I wish it could hit sooner, but it's after I get home. That stuff takes a long time to activate. I'm wondering about taking it earlier, but that's a big risk. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, I'm so glad that we're getting into the really, like, the good stuff. Yeah, my producers are going to love this conversation. 
I wonder whether Mama Sita ever like would have popped an edible uh, uh, at work. With I Joan can only, with Joan Crawford. I can only imagine that she would have to sedate herself somehow. It would explain why she. Put but she up did. With she did have so not nine children. So I heard that. I think if you could survive even one child, you know, let alone nine. Did they move? with her into Joan Crawford's house? Or no, I don't know? believe so. I think all her children had left the nest by then. So Joan Crawford became her 10th child. Yes. Yeah. Do we have another question? Hi, Jackie. So because you've had such a big theatrical career and you're now working on television, which one do you like more to work on? People ask that, and I, you know, I like work. <laughs> I like not being in my apartment crying because I don't have work. So I'm, I'm grateful for both. And of course, I like it's cliched, but there's really nothing like a live audience. Um, but this was a great experience, too. I mean, you know, uh, on TV, you gain weight and on Broadway, you lose weight. So that's <laughs> that's also a factor. But uh, yeah, I, I, I can't I both both have, you know, uh, plus minus factors, not even minus factors. I mean, both are great, but you know, theater I have a, that'll always be a special, special love. I think this is a good time to also talk about the fact that you are a brilliant writer. And you, yes, she is. Yes, she is. You need to, Jackie's done I've nine. I've written. Writers get up every day and write. I've written. She's. And I take weed gummies. I'm not a writer. <laughs> Jackie, I am a lazy you, person stop who it. has written. You are the most, like, I'd have more followers on Twitter if I were that great a writer. You're a great writer. You've done nine or ten solo shows. You write these hilarious comedy songs. You, my favorite one is about how you don't want to do any more charity shows. Oh, like yeah, you, the benefit song. Yeah, like, like you're going to pay me if I'm going to get up on stage. Yeah, we have shows on Monday nights now, so that is working. <laughs> so you me. can turn down yeah. the, all the yeah. Monday oh, night that's Oh, I'm so, I would love to do it. Mm -hmm. Shows on Monday. Well, I, my wish for you, the thing that I'm going to put out into the universe is that you find a way to understand how talented you are, how much joy you bring to people, how the, the, the fact that you are not lazy. This is an affirmation meeting. It, it, look, I, I am a beautiful child of God yes, today. you are. You are not. <laughs> This is not a statement about anybody but you, but Jackie Hoffman, you are a brilliant performer. Thank You're a you fantastic so much. writer. We're I'm so excited to spend this time with you, and I wish that you would have just some sense of that for yourself, of how loved you are. Well, maybe if you crawl out of Kristen Chenoweth's ass and further up into mine, <laughs> look, done. Then done. I would have love for myself. Let's take one not more. Not that question. there's any room up there. <laughs> Let's take one more question. Hey, Jackie. I know you worked on the movie uh, A Dirty Shame. Uh, yes. What was it like working with John Waters? Great um, question. Um, I met John Waters on Hairspray, of course. Right. And then he, uh, he cast me in his movie, and I can't talk about God, what a life. Uh, yeah, that was, that was great. That, that was just an incredible experience. And <laughs> He guest starred on <laughs> Feud. Bizarre. He did, did and we didn't shoot there? the same day. You when didn't... in LA, when you don't shoot the same day, you might as well be like one person's in Miami and one person's in Siberia. Uh -huh. You're just in different <laughs> worlds. But yes, and he was amazing on it. He was great. There's so many great guests. Yeah, the roles. casting is brilliant. But it was a great, wacky, bizarre experience. Do you have a John Waters story you want to share with us? Oh, gosh. Putting you on the spot. Now you're putting me on the spot. Jackie on the spot. Um, he was, he told me, uh, I think after, after Hairspray, on opening night of Hairspray, he said that, I, oh, I was wearing a, a gown that my, a friend made for me, a couture gown that a friend made for me, and, and his mom was there and I got to meet his mom and she said, oh, you look so beautiful. In that show, they put you in such ugly clothes. <laughs> so he, he gets it from his mom. Yeah. 
Oh, that's great. Um, speaking of mom, Mama Sita is kind of everybody's mama. I mean, Joan Crawford's, but I feel like everybody kind of wants to have one of her around the house. Um, I would love to see her get her own spin-off show, so let's make that happen. Um, and I cannot wait till Halloween when we see everybody dressed up as you. Dr hashtag Dragacita, hashtag Mimacita, um, and... Uh, I'm crossing my fingers for a hashtag Emmy Sita. Emmy Sita. Yeah. The, at the time. Oh, in fact, there's one more quick story I want you to tell. We're running out of time, but uh, tell me about meeting Laverne Cox this week. Oh, I just met her yesterday at Sandy Land, Sandra Bernhardt show, and Laverne was going out as as I came in, and she. Uh, I was like, so, I'm so honored to meet you. She, oh, girl, when you kept saying, if you throw something at me and then you're going to leave and then you didn't leave and then you left and then you came back, everything, girl, it's everything. <laughs> so that's a, a true feud head. And didn't she also say, I voted for you last night? Oh, did she? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I have one vote. <laughs> For the Emmys. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. I'm really excited to see uh, what happens next for you. I'm crossing my fingers for the Emmys, and I think I'm going to go back and binge watch all of Feud again. Jackie thank Hoffman, you. congratulations, and thank you for being here.